questions. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, instead of actually doing our last question, since we're running a little bit low on time, what I'd like to do is to open it up to the audience to have you ask questions, whether to the panel at large or to specific individuals. So, could I, uh, could I uh, have a question from the audience? Anyone yes. have a question for our panel? Yes, this is a question for Richard, who twice threw out the intriguing sentence, time is a variable that has to be optimized. Could you talk more about that? Uh, yeah, and I, I think that maybe the best way to do that is, is to give you uh, an example. Um, well, I actually did touch on one example, which was, let's say you, you have a, uh, a, a real-time stream that's going from a server to a client, and that stream is interrupted. Okay. Currently, when that, st that stream is interrupted, the buffer is starved, the picture freezes. And that, this is typical on networks. It's the nature of networks. They're unruly. There's net routers going out. There's latency introduced. Your picture freezes. It, then the bit starts back up again. It reconnects. You start to get some movement. And it's, for the most part, uh, accountable for much of the lower picture quality that we oftentimes see with real-time streaming. Now, assuming that you reconnect, and that while that outage was taking place, that interruption in the stream, there was a continual viewing happening on the client side out of local cache. By, by being able to move content faster than real time, which is to break out of the paradigm of, you know, the, the regular stream is a constant static feeding of the stream at the rate at which it's being consumed. They're always the same. It's being consumed at 28, it's being fed at 28, 8. Uh, to be able to go faster than that is, is to be able to jump forward in time, is to be able to catch up, and is to use time as a variable that you don't have if you're, if you're stuck in the real-time realm. Does that make sense? Is that starting to address your question? Because the, uh, the, there is another aspect to it, which is evening out the bursty nature of a network. And maybe that's an, another place to look at it, where you know typically IT person has to reserve a certain amount of bandwidth based on anticipated peak demand. But it, but networks are bursty, so people come on at different times. There's a load profile that kind of goes up and down, and any time that the load is less than what was anticipated, you've got bandwidth sitting there unused. So time's going to go by. And you can never go back in time and retrieve the bandwidth that didn't get used just a few moments ago. But if you're utilizing the ability to go faster than real time or to burst content to local cache, then as soon as bandwidth's available, your server can say, oh great, here's my chance. I can now preload this client and this client and this client based on their consumption rates, based on their connection. And so once again, you're, you're utilizing time to be able to grab bandwidth before it gets by unused. It's very interesting uh, perspective, uh, actually using time in this manner. I would expect maybe uh, Paul or one of the other panelists might have a, a counterpoint. Um, well, you, you don't always have the opportunity to use time in this manner. Uh, for example, somebody who's got a 28.8 modem, there's not an awful lot they can do to try and speed up that process. I can understand the, the possible infrastructure necessary to, uh, to incorporate this kind of an aspect, but what would you do for you know, internet connections with respect to time, and how would you manage something like this on an intranet? It's actually easier on an intranet, but to go to your first point first, okay. um, any time that, that the size of your pipe is larger than the rate of the encoding of the content, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to send the bits faster than they're being consumed. Right. Okay, so, Understood. Okay, so that's... So the only time that you can't go faster than real time is when those two are the same. Mm -hmm. and, and in that case, you know, you degrade back to real time streaming. But again, I'll bring you back to those initial industry trends going forward. You know, are we getting more bandwidth? Is more bandwidth emerging in intranets and eventually on the internet, or is it less? And I think we all agree that the answer is more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, is, is the cost of storage, which is the other component you've got to have. In other words, you can't burst something to a client that doesn't have the capacity to receive it. Mm -hmm. So is, is that becoming available and is the price going down? And I would say yes. I mean, when we started 10 years ago, we were demonstrating hardware that could do this. And uh, a gigabyte at the time was $1,500. 
So, you know, it's clearly a barrier to entry for <laughs> any kind of real life ap uh, application, but you know, we're like in the ten, fifteen dollar range. So, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big difference. Uh, now, I am curious about your comment about the internet because I would have thought you might have put it the other way around that the internet would be more problematic. But you the internet that. is more problematic. Oh, I thought you said the internet. I'm just curious about your particular tool for doing this time acceleration issue. Sounds like a quantum mechanics nightmare, but. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, this is a little heady stuff, man. We're reaching into the future now. I have to know how you're doing it, so. Well, you want to sign a non disclosure? No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we Before we get too tight. I'm just curious about your particular tool for doing this time acceleration issue. Sounds like a quantum mechanics nightmare, but. <laughs> well, uh, I mean. This is a little heady stuff, man. We're reaching into the future now, and I have to know how you're doing it, so.